This is the ultimate beginner's guide for DJI Mavic users. Hey guys, I recently got the DJI Mavic Pro. I looked around on YouTube and I couldn't really find a comprehensive guide on what you need to know right before you fly. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys what you need to know so you can get this guy up in the air right away, right when you get it. These are the things I really wish someone told me when I first got the drone. All right, let's get started. First thing I didn't know when I got this is how to power the DJI Mavic drone. In order to power on, you're going to need to press the power button here. But before you do that, you're always going to want to power your remote on first. And the way to power it on, see what I did was, if you just hit the power button, it just shows you the battery percentage. It doesn't actually power it on. Trick here is you have to press it once quickly and a second time right after that and hold it down. There you go, and it turns on. So, same thing with the DJI Mavic Pro. All you have to do is press once and a second time really quickly and it powers on. There you go. The DJI Mavic Pro doesn't come fully charged. So, remember to charge your batteries before you fly on the remote as well as the drone. The next thing you need to know is how to connect your phone. When you want to connect your phone, you're basically going to have a cable that runs from the left of the remote all the way down to the left handle. And initially, it comes with the lightning connector for your iPhone, but then it comes with a second adapter here for an Android phone. You can also use the bottom USB as a way to connect your phone. Now one little tip, it doesn't really match up correctly with your phone. So what you can do is you can pop off this little piece right here. You can move it to the right end of the controller. So now the cable is free to move around and it just attaches just like this. And there you go, attach just like this. Mind you, it doesn't need to be fully straight all the time. You can have it a little bit wonky on the holder, no problem, still flies without any issues. So I'm assuming that a lot of you got this drone to get some great footage. One thing is that the drone comes with a 16 gigabyte SD card, but when you're flying around a lot, that's not going to be enough. What I've done is I've upgraded it to a 64 gigabyte SD card. I'll leave a link in the below so you guys can check it out later. When you first get the drone, you're going to need to update the firmware on the drone. Now, you don't want to take this thing out and then realize that you have to update the firmware. What I recommend is to turn it on at home with a Wi-Fi connection and download the latest firmware and upload it to your drone so that you can go flying right away when you take it outside. It's really easy. It's just like this. Hit update, download, and install easy as pie. The drone will probably ask you to calibrate the compass, which will force you to rotate it just like this, and also like this. You're also going to have calibrate the front sensors on the drone. So I had to do this when I first got it for like 10 minutes, and nothing was working. I had to keep on recalibrating because it wasn't recognizing the sensor. And I was doing this motion for 10 minutes so it could recognize the front sensor. And the reason why I had to keep on doing it repeatedly was because there was a sticker covering the front sensor. So the sensors couldn't read the ground properly. Take off the sticker before you start calibrating the front sensors. So you're going to have to attach the propellers when you first get the drone. DJI Mavic Pro has two sets of propellers, one for the left and one for the right. How do you tell which is for the left and the right? You're gonna see on the center of a propeller a little white circle. That will match to the propeller motor, a little white circle. Find those two white circles, or the lack thereof, and you'll be able to attach the propellers no problem. Just push and twist. There you go. When you're first flying the drone, you want to set it at RC mode, which means remote control mode, not Wi-Fi mode. It should already be set to RC mode, but better check this before you fly. On the remote control, on the right-hand side of the controller here, you're gonna wanna make sure that it's set to positioning mode. If you press it up, it'll switch it to sport mode. You wanna have it on positioning mode so that it enables all of the film shooting modes. If you put it in sport mode, it'll go a lot faster. It'll turn off some of the obstacle sensing features. For starters, I recommend leaving it in 
in positioning mode. There's a lot of steps, we're halfway there, so bear with me. When you first get the drone, you're going to get a lens hood cover. One, a little black piece that comes off, as well as a lens hood. When you fly, you're gonna wanna take this off because you will get sun glare kind of like this. I didn't know this, that's why I had this problem. So what you're gonna wanna do is just take it off completely and fly without it. Don't worry, it's meant for this. Now, if you wanna get a little more extra protection, then you can get a lens hood, which I'll leave a link in the description below. The gimbal itself also has a little protector clip to keep it in place during storage. You're gonna wanna take this off before you turn on the Mavic, because when you turn it on, the gimbal will automatically calibrate itself. If you leave it on, you'll get this error message, so remember to take it off. After you're done flying, reattach the gimbal clip. I have trouble sometimes putting it on. And the reason why I've had trouble is because I always use one hand. Kind of doesn't fit on and you have a lot of trouble. Key is to use two of your hands, one on the lens clip and two on the gimbal. Make sure you don't touch the lens and just slide it into place just like that. See? That's a lot easier. Now. When you first get the drone, it's going to be in beginner mode, which is fine because it limits the speed and your distance where you can fly. Also, it doesn't allow you for all of the filming modes. But this is good. Practice with this mode and you feel comfortable with the controls, then you can turn it off just like this. Just hit this X button like that and you got full access to all of the controls. Now we're going to fly. So when taking off, you're going to wait for GPS mode to turn on. It usually starts in ATTI mode, and the reason for this is that it's a visioning system. You want the GPS to sync properly before flying it so that you can return to home in case there's any issues when flying the drone. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. It takes a few seconds, maybe a minute. Better safe than sorry. I suggest to wait. Now the fun part begins. Let's take off. Now taking off is very simple. There's a software built in way and there's a way where you can just use the joystick. You know when I first started I would just hit the takeoff button like this and then swipe for it to take off. The screen takeoff is very nice when you have flat ground but sometimes you don't have flat ground and you're going to have to release the drone with your hand. And the easiest way to do this is to move the two controllers down and out, which will activate the signal that is ready to take off, and then just press up on the left control stick, like this. So landing is very similar. If you've taken off from flat ground, then you can use the software landing where you just hit this button to land, and then you swipe and it lands, no problem. Now sometimes land isn't so smooth and you're going to have to catch it with your hand. And the easiest way to do this is put your hand underneath the drone and slowly press the left controller down until it gets your hand, grab it like this and it'll fight you for a second, then continue to hold down the left controller and the motors will eventually stop. So easy. 16. Return to home. If you want to have return to home to the exact same location you took off, you're going to have to use this method. You don't want to take off and then just move forward or backward or somewhere. You're going to want to go 10 meters up so that the sensing cameras and the GPS can locate your exact position and record the return to home. If you don't fly up 10 meters and you just fly off, it's not going to be that accurate. Now let's get to the camera. What I didn't know early on is that you can actually scroll the camera up and down. And the way to do this, where your index finger is, there's a little scroller here. And you can use this to scroll the camera. I didn't know that when I first started. When I first bought the drone, I just bought the basic pack. And it came with one battery. I quickly found out one battery wasn't enough. You're actually going to want to have at least two, and for me, a maximum of three. Some people buy four batteries, but usually I only use two at a scene. The third one is a little bit extra. I think it's enough, at least in my experience. So save yourself an extra battery. And if you need it at one point, then maybe in the future buy it. But I say stick with three batteries 
initially. Now that you have your three batteries, you're going to want to make sure that these batteries are labeled. What I do is I've added a little label right here so that I know how to recycle the batteries and make sure that I'm using all of the batteries equally as opposed to using the same one all of the time. And the last thing, if you want to save yourself a little bit of money, you don't need to buy the DJI carrying case. What I've done personally is I've just used my camera bag as a way to carry around the drone. It fits perfectly. See, the drone goes in this compartment. I put the hub down here as well as the three batteries. I have the charger in this compartment and I put all of the propellers in this compartment. And there you go, my DJI carrying case. Something that I already had, I didn't have to pay extra for, and I'm ready to fly. Well, that concludes the video and I really hope you like it. These are the things, like I said earlier, that I wish I knew when I first got the drone and I wanted to share it with you guys. If you guys like this video, please hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, I'm happy to help. Just leave a comment in the comment section below. And last of all, if you want to subscribe, like always, subscribe. I'll see you guys soon.